we stand opposed to capitalism, the state, colonialism, patriarchy, and white supremacy. And we're trying to reach people to fight these systems and liberate themselves, right? Therefore, communications is one arm of praxis that we definitely need to strengthen. Not every radical needs to do it, but it does need to get done. Propaganda is literally everywhere, in every medium, targeting every audience in every way. It's a spooky word with authoritarian, manipulative connotations for some, but the concept itself is neutral, just referring to communication meant to influence. Advertising is a type of propaganda meant to promote a particular product, brand, service, or idea that appeals to the personal, shares information, follows trends, and creates brand loyalty and experiences. They seek whatever's profitable, hence the rise of rainbow capitalism. Instagram infographics are propaganda. Unskippable YouTube ads from Abby Shapiro are propaganda. And mainstream news is definitely propaganda. It can't be ignored because propaganda is everywhere we go, which can be kind of sickening. Our views are obstructed and our personal space is violated as the machine pushes itself down our throats. I hate it. Which is almost ironic as someone about to secure their bachelor's in mass communication. Regardless, we still need to be able to communicate with folks on a larger scale. Why? First of all, because of all the narratives and biases that color this world, whether capitalist realism, status realism, white supremacy, patriarchy, etc. We need to raise our voices to combat them, to counter the monopoly in the discourse, and to create a culture of resistance against those narratives. Second of all, because we need to get our information and alternatives out there. Horizontal, grassroots info sharing has been a key aspect of anti-authoritarian praxis since the pamphlets on the 1800s shop floors and long, long before then too. Of course, propaganda can only do so much. It must be paired with liberatory action. Even if you personally, perhaps due to disability, can't be on the ground in the most literal sense and can only take part in, say, propaganda, well, first of all, completely understandable. I never want to exclude anyone of any ability from organizing and from radical action. However, I would still say that connecting and coordinating with those who are literally on the ground is essential work. After all, advertising has to be paired with the actual product. Praxis and communications go hand in hand. The ultimate question is how? How to propaganda? These are my thoughts. First and foremost, you have to know who you're targeting and why. Understanding the target audience is an essential part of any ad campaign. Different people have different worldviews, motivations, biases, situations, and experiences that you definitely need to be aware of. What works for some definitely would work for others, which means you really can't cast a very wide net. In corporate marketing speak, you gotta engage in market segmentation, targeting, differentiation, and positioning. Have a particular people in mind and speak their language. Help educate them. Put things in their context. Empathize with what they're going through. Build meaningful relationships. This is where anarchic advertising differs from real advertising. We actually care. We want to actually empower them, not make them feel empowered by the latest product. Personally, I try to reach people who are similar to me. Working class people of color, students, and people in my generation who are frustrated with the world around them and scared for the future. Reaching other anarchists was always much lower on my agenda, but we tend to have a habit of finding each other. Once you know your target audience and your purpose, you have to think medium. The content of the message is one thing, but as the saying goes, the medium is the message. The channel you use is going to affect the way your message is expressed. A pamphlet is going to look differently and be received differently than a poster or a tweet or an animation or a podcast. Think about how your chosen medium is going to affect your message so that you can adapt your message to your chosen medium. Next up, be unambiguous. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Don't try to water down your goals. Don't try to obscure your intentions. Vague radical language is so often and so easily appropriated. Don't let liberals or other authoritarians hijack the message. Stay unequivocally consistent with your core values, whether you're an anarchist, autonomist, council calm, communalist, whatever. Keep your message actionable. If all you're doing is complaining about the system, climate change, or oppression as a whole, you're going to demotivate and demoralize people. 
they're going to look to the first vanguard or party that claims to offer a solution. But if you want people to liberate themselves, the message has to motivate them to act in some meaningful way. It has to emphasize their potency and their initiative. Next, keep your message simple and clear. Drop the jargon and the word salad. That doesn't mean to dumb down or talk down, huh? It just means that, as I mentioned earlier, speak their language, distill, do dilute the theory, and make it digestible. Otherwise, you're just going to appeal to those already in radical circles. Some examples of this simple yet energizing approach would be the slogans of the past few decades of social movements. Black power, we are the 99%, free Palestine, no justice, no peace. They all capture the essence of the movement while keeping it simple and provide an easy avenue for further exploration, explanation, and understanding. Lastly, be patient. Not everyone is super politically engaged, which can be easy to forget if you're deeply submerged in online politics. Be prepared to navigate the misconceptions and misunderstandings they may have floating in their head. Don't pretend to know all the answers and don't go on the attack, especially on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Engage them in a dialogue. Study the Socratic method. I mean, I haven't read At the Cafe, Conversations on Anarchism by Eric Maltesta yet, but I've heard it's an excellent example of this. At the same time though, do I expect logic, or logic alone, to win people over? Firstly, because words have to be backed up by action that impacts them, and also because humans are emotional, not logical creatures. Don't underestimate the power of emotion. Empathy was what radicalized me. Theory came after. All in all, there's a lot of ways to send a message, and it depends on your context, intentions, audience, resources, and medium. You can take an active approach, engaging with audience directly, putting conflict in context, engaging in solidarity, and doing whatever is necessary to complement on-the-ground action. Or you can take a passive approach, sharing ideas, tactics, theory, praxis guides, or current events. Don't limit yourself, be adaptable, and use whatever tools are available to you. Don't overthink it either. We do what we do because we care about this earth and its inhabitants. We're not in the business of trickery, deceit, or profiteering. We're just trying to resist. Our politics are personal. Let that inform your approach. As individuals, we may not be as powerful as corporate media. In fact, we're overwhelmed by the immense resources of the various state and corporate media machines. Still, together, we can make some noise. Be creative, be loud, and be many. The internet has been an invaluable asset for our work. Collectives and individuals can connect with other collectives and individuals all over the world. We're able to build solidarity like never before. We're able to amplify our aims like never before. People are angry, people are frustrated. Many are ready to really fight back and really fight for something better. As long as our actions and our words are paired, we can make more of a difference than we might first expect. Just as our uprisings rock the world, so can our propaganda. Peace. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share with your fellow peoples. Thanks once again, of course, to the family, including our newest member, Soul Dad. If you can, join these beautiful humans and support me too on patreon.com slash saintrue. Check out all my other videos for a range of radical topics. Follow me on Twitter at underscore St. True. Thanks again. Peace.